and welcome to Catholic Current, where we give you an update on events affecting the Church in the United States. From Washington, D.C., I'm Mara Moser. The Vatican is not only where the Pope lives and the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church, it is also a city-state with an important role to play in diplomatic relations, including with the United States. Longtime correspondent with Catholic News Service Rome, Carol Glatz, spoke this week with Ambassador Joe Donnelly. He is the U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See. This is from our home church, um, the Notre Dame Basilica. Mm -hmm. This is the original pews, the wood. <laughs> Thank you. In his role as the U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See, Joe Donnelly brings his experience as a lawyer and former congressman from Indiana to the Vatican. As he approaches the two-year mark of his ambassadorship, Donnelly is deeply involved in working with the Pope's diplomatic team to explain U.S. interests and to collaborate on shared initiatives on matters of common concern, like human trafficking and climate change. During a recent visit to his residence in Rome on the Janiculum Hill, I had the opportunity to discuss with him his path to this significant position at the heart of the Catholic Church and the ways he contributes to advancing the United States' mission in the Eternal City and abroad. Good morning, Ambassador. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. Oh, it's my privilege. Now, how did you end up becoming an ambassador? Walk us through those steps. Uh, what was the process like? President Biden and I um, had a long time friendship. Um, he's an extraordinary person. He's deeply Catholic, deeply faithful. And his team called. And they had mentioned to me before, you know, don't take anything ultra permanent because the president may be calling you. Um, and they called and said, listen, the president thinks you'd be a great fit um, for the Holy See. And we'd like to know before he calls you up if, if you can do it. Because if you can't, we don't want him calling you up <laughs> for obvious reasons. And um, number one, he's the president of the United States. So when the president calls, you, you, you try to help your country. And number two is um, he's my friend and you want to help your friends succeed. And so that's how I wound up here. Now, historically, U.S. ambassadors have come from a variety of different backgrounds, either lawyers, uh, professors, charitable organizations, um, and they're usually not career diplomats. Why do you think that is? Um, it's, it's very different from a typical embassy in, um, in this way, where a typical embassy, we would have a visa department, a, do passports, have chambers of commerce around the country that I would travel to to speak at or to try to, to promote American business or, or work with the host country on business issues. This is much more like a, a UN posting almost in that it, it really is about relationship building and making sure that um, the Holy Father and his team understand where America um, sits on various issues. And that in return, that we understand where the Vatican sits on various issues. And so I'm not here on, on a religious basis. I'm here to uh, work on the foreign policy of the United States with the foreign policy of the Vatican. And so that when the Pope speaks, when his team speaks, that they understand where America stands. For instance, early in the Ukraine war, um, or in the Russian war against Ukraine, um, Russia attacked Ukraine, uh, Pope Francis had said, well, we think this may be in part because NATO is, is barking at the door of Russia. Um, and that's, I have incredible respect for the Pope, but he was a little off on that one. It, this is in fact because Russia invaded Ukraine and Russia attacked um, a, a neighbor living in peace, uh, just trying to feed their people and um, keep their country strong. And so uh, all credit due to um, the Vatican team and to the Holy Father that over time we tried to let them know, well, here's what's actually going on at this part in Kharkiv. Here's what's going on in the Donbass. Here's what's going on in various parts of Ukraine. Here's how this started. Here's the plans that Russia actually had to invade Ukraine 
um, based on that they just wanted to take Ukraine back. Um, and so recently when the Holy Father spoke to the diplomats in his January 8th um, speech to the diplomatic corps, he talked about the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which was a significantly different way to talk about it. Purtroppo, dopo quasi due anni di guerra su larga scala della Federazione Russa contro l'Ucraina, la tanto desiderata pace non è ancora riuscita a trovare posto nelle menti e nel cuore. Nonostante le numerosissime vittime e l'enorme distruzione. So this year marks the 40th anniversary of establishing formal relations between the US and the Vatican. And there were a number of challenges um, to get there. Go back to before 1984, what were the circumstances like? Why was there opposition? Well, I, I wasn't privy to most of that, but my, my sense is that there was a concern, oh, is this favoring one religion over another religion? And as I said, you know, people will ask me when I go back home, they'll go, well, what's your position on this church issue? And what's your position on this church issue? And it's like, I don't do church issues. That's why we have the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. That's why we have the Catholic Church in America. My job is to work on the foreign policy of the United States along with the foreign policy of the Vatican so that we can work together in, in those places that we can in Ukraine to try to create a safer world to save lives um, in Israel, um, in Gaza, working on uh, preventing human trafficking. Uh, trying to work with the Vatican, as, as Pope Francis always calls it, um, our planet. This is, this is our home. And we have a sacred, uh, God gave us this planet and put us as stewards and we have an obligation. And so we work with the Vatican on that. And so it's very much um, on issues that matter around the entire world and it's not focused on church related. That's why I think in part it's been such a big success over the past 40 years because all the ambassadors understood that. Um, we've tried to hew very closely to the mission that we've been given and we have a great relationship with the Vatican. We don't agree on everything, obviously. Um, and the conversations are pretty blunt sometimes. Um, they, they are bishops and they are diplomats and they also can get to the point in a hurry. Now it makes sense for diplomats to try to find common ground to build on, um, but what happens if there's some conflict or differences? What do you do then? You know, you try to get as close as you can to agreeing, but there are just some things you don't agree on and you understand that um, in, in dealing with each other. Um, we have different parts of the world with different interests and you know folks from other countries obviously don't agree with the United States on everything and the United States doesn't agree with them um, and it's the same with the Vatican and so you um, believe in your in, in your case and you bring it forward and you stand for what you believe in um, as does the other country, the Vatican, or whatever other country it might be. And um, you try to come as, you try to agree on those things you can, and on those you can't, you respect one another's opinions. I remember um, Ronald Reagan, when he was president, um, said that he and Tip O'Neill, who was the uh, Speaker of the House at the time, you know, certainly did not agree on everything and it would sometimes be knocking heads all day long. But at the end of the day, they'd uh, you know, sit down and have a corned beef sandwich together. Could you share any insights or perspectives on the diplomatic strategies and operations of the Holy See? Um, well, one thing that everybody does know, I was at a dinner one time and one of the Vatican diplomats, um, somebody was talking about their country's form of of government as to parliamentary or this or that. And the Vatican diplomat looked and said, our form of government is a theocracy and we have one person in charge. <laughs> but the Pope also listens and um, is known for that. He, um, he is in charge, but he relies on an incredibly talented team 
of men and women. Um, women have some of the most important positions in the Vatican now, um, in the operations of the Vatican, and do an extraordinary job. Um, we try to be helpful any way we can, you know, in areas where they may be a little bit thinner, um, like security intelligence or those kind of things. We try to work together um, when we can. Could you discuss any current priorities or issues oh, that yeah. the U.S. is working on with the Vatican? We work every day with the, with the Holy See on Ukraine uh, and on Israel and Gaza. Um, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, appointed uh, Cardinal Matteo Zuppi, who is the, um, uh, the head of the Italian Church, um, Cardinal of Bologna, to be his special envoy on Ukraine issues. And we work with him on a constant basis, especially in regards to trying to bring back Ukrainian children who have been taken by Russia. As Russia invaded Ukraine, in those areas they went into, they'd then take the kids. And, and they are in re-education camps in Russia. They are sent to different locations all over, over 20,000 children. And um, Cardinal Zuppi has been working tirelessly to try to bring those children back in coordination with Cardinal Paroline from the Secretary of State and his whole team. And so just last year, um, I, I went with Cardinal Zuppi um, we set up a meeting with President Biden um, where the president spent time um, with the cardinal who also has um, not only the children but the entirety of Ukraine as his portfolio um, that he works on. And um, it was how can we try to find peace together? And so, you know, we just we met with him just last week um, are in constant contact and we meet with uh, the Vatican Secretary of State as well. And some children have come home because of this effort, not as many as we want, but um, children are coming home. So when you hear like uh, this country or that country was able to bring more Ukrainian children home, usually the driving force is the Vatican. And um, they are not looking for publicity, they're looking to get the children home. And um, it's unique how they do it. Thank you very much for meeting with us today. Thank you. Our thanks to Carol and to Ambassador Donnelly for joining us. That's it for this edition of Catholic Current. As always, you can find out more about this week's topic by visiting us online at usccb.org or follow us on social media at usccb. I'm Mara Moser. See you next week. <music>